going to be a special episode. Wait a minute. There we go. Today, uh, I welcome you back to the Learn to Code podcast. It's been uh, quite some time since the last episode. I've been working on getting a new job to sustain myself and my lifestyle. And I've been focused on that. It's been quite an experience, may I say. Uh, although I am still looking for a job uh, on my current city here in, P in Puebla, Mexico, um, I've been willing to talk about my learning experience and my job seeking experience too. So I've been posting for a couple of jobs recently. Uh, one is for the Volkswagen Puebla company and another one for, um, I don't remember the name right now, <laughs> I should. Uh, but this um, is a software development company on the United States, and I believe they do have an office here in Puebla. Uh, I don't really know them uh, yet. I think um, if the job is right and the pay is well, uh, I guess I can take that job too. So I'm currently seeking uh, for a job. And um, this past Friday, um, it's been like uh, four days already. I've been working on um, getting uh, this new job on the Volkswagen Puebla factory. They are looking for uh, back-end developers working with Ruby. Um, so it, it was quite weird at the beginning because uh, uh, without knowing anyone really here um, in the sense of, well, I just started working with um, iCar Solutions LA. So... I've been working with them for a couple of years. Uh, we lost our single client, and that is the government of the state of Puebla. Uh, so the company pretty much uh, disbanded right after that. It was a uh, one-client company. So uh, after the disband, I still get to receive my, uh, my last paycheck uh, at the end of this month. There are uh, a couple of days before that happens. And after that, uh, the time is going to start running out uh, because that's going to be my last income. Uh, the last time I'm going to get any income of any kind until I get a new job. Um, so what's the plan? Basically, uh, I'm going to remain here as uh, as much as possible because moving is going to be, uh, it's going to require some money. I, I do have some um, savings on my bank account. Uh, but I guess that's enough for me talking about myself and my problems. Uh, the thing is that after looking for a job, uh, I posted my CV into Volkswagen Puebla via LinkedIn. And actually, uh, uh, not just that job, the, the second one that I've been, uh, uh, being called about, um, I also posted my CV on LinkedIn for that one. Uh, the thing with Volkswagen Puebla is uh, I posted for uh, software developer development software development in uh, in IT there in Volkswagen. Um, so uh, after reading the requirements, they are looking for a position for a Java developer. Uh, so I posted my CV for that. Uh, and they are looking for another job in SharePoint development. So I posted another CV for that. So I posted for a couple of jobs uh, for that company here in Puebla. And I was uh, rejected by the first, by the first one, by the uh, Java development one. Uh, and I was uh, waiting for a response from the SharePoint uh, position, which I had not received any answer so far. Uh, all of this, um, the recruitment process starts at the Volkswagen uh, job seeking website, where you basically create an account and upload all your um, your work experience data into this website. And oh, wait, wait a minute. I forgot about the music, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, never mind. So, um, after working with that uh, for quite some time, um, well, 
Uh, I receive a call t- like uh, 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 a day after that, and uh, the recruiter was asking me uh, about uh, an opportunity to work with them. And um, basically, uh, she was making some questions about uh, uh, which uh, side of development do I feel more comfortable. Maybe um, it's back end development. Maybe it's front end development. Um, I was basically being asked if I will uh, uh, I will be interested in software development in in, a, in the finance uh, department of Volkswagen Puebla. So I say yes, and uh, I began the selection process, which, by the way, is quite um, it's quite elaborate, it's sophisticated. Yet I didn't feel it was unnecessary at any point. So you basically sign in into this uh, Volkswagen uh, website for human resources uh, recruitment, and you basically answer a series of uh, uh, of time limited exams for you know the the usual uh, human resources questions, uh, mathematical questions, and such you know um, basic ability. Uh, to to think in abstract ways and to solve problems, uh, nothing related directly with software development, yet due to the actual work of solving problems using computers and programs, well, basically, um, I may like to think that I did pretty well, I guess, maybe. Um, after that, I decided to uh, continue with the selection process in Volkswagen in Puebla, and uh, the recruiter sent me uh, a couple of PDF files containing each of them uh, as uh, a technical uh, exam, let's call it like that, uh, which is basically a test. Um, and and you are being asked to produce a piece of software. In my case, uh, she was telling me basically that uh, uh, I can do bo- both if I want Yet, uh, I only allow to, to be considered for one position only. So she suggested me that I should choose, um, the, the technical exam that I feel more comfortable with. So I decided to go for the backend development, uh, assignment. Um, so I committed to do that. And the very same day I read that assignment was basically, the assignment was about uh, creating a REST API um, for financial operations. So basically I was going to uh, work with uh, financial accounts, you know, uh, uh, balance accounts, and basically create a REST API to transfer money between them. So... I was basically tasked with, uh, the assignment was about creating a REST, a RESTful API, um, a web API, obviously, to basically send, uh, get and post messages to the web server and get answers and sending data, um, using JSON files, you know. So, uh, I did ha- at the moment of, re- of getting the, the assignment, I, 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 I had to admit that I had no experience whatsoever with uh, with the required technology for the assignment, which was Python. So uh, that was pretty clear on the description of the assignment that it was a requirement to basically uh, work with Python. It was not optional. So my plan was to basically um, work with Java and create the the web service using Java. Uh, Although I didn't know um, anything about Python that day, that was a Friday, I believe, uh, I committed to myself to learn Python as soon as possible and deliver the the assignment uh, correctly as soon as possible. So uh, I didn't um, waste any time, so I decided to uh, pay yet another month of Pluralsight um, it's, it, they are charging uh, $29, I believe, uh, almost $30 maybe. Uh, so I uh, pay for another month at Pluralsight.com, which is uh, uh, a very useful website for learning how to develop software, by the way. 
and many other things. But yet my interest is uh, dedicated to uh, to software development and maybe some IT. Uh, but the thing is that I found this uh, collection of courses there. Um, uh, in inside the Pluralsight website, uh, we get individual courses which you can uh, watch on your leisure. And um, basically, um, you know, uh, you can learn whatever you want. Uh, so you you do type uh, whatever programming language you are interested in. And I was lucky enough to find uh, something called a Python path. Uh, paths inside Pluralsight are, are basically collections of courses, uh, of related courses divided by and grouped by uh, difficulty. For example, the Python path was basically uh, composed of three levels. Uh, I think it's called beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And uh, each group uh, contains a series of, um, of courses. So I decided to learn the, the minimal necessary for, uh, for the assignment. So I decided to, uh, to watch the Python fundamentals course. And another one called uh, How to Create an API RESTful um, API with Python and and Flask. So uh, I watched uh, both courses. The first one, the, the Python Fundamentals, was basically teaching me what the Python programming language was about, how does it work, and how to actually use it. Yet it didn't contain anything uh, related to RESTful API. That's why after watching that course, I dedicated myself to watch the the how to create a RESTful API with Flask and Python, obviously. Um, so those two courses uh, were basically teaching me how to develop uh, in Python. Um, thankfully, with my experience with Java, uh, I managed to learn uh, the basics of, of Python fundamentals um, in less than 24 hours. And yet, uh, since I didn't sleep, because although the course itself was five hours and 11 minutes itself, the truth is that it's not like being watching a, a Netflix series. Uh, you, you cannot really, you can't uh, just watch every single uh, video or episode and call it a day and say, well, uh, I just spent that five hours of my life uh, watching this course about Python and now I know Python. Uh, that's just a flat out lie. The truth about learning uh, to code is that uh, for every single hour that, that I spend watching uh, videos about uh, Python, I must consider about uh, the double of that at least um, for practical uh, learning. And that means that, uh, you know what, I'm going to watch an entire um, uh, this video maybe, and then I'm going to try out uh, what, whatever I learned. And most of the time, uh, I face many difficulties trying to figure out how the l programming language is supposed to be, uh, working or it's supposed, um, or basically the framework for Python in this case. And let's remember that I came from Java and Java is a very restricted programming language. And I was actually surprised that many, um, many pillars of the Java programming language are not, uh, don't really exist on Python. For example, the main one, and my struggle to this day was uh, the fact that we don't have curly braces for creating blocks of code. Basically, you use identation for, cre for, uh, for creating blocks of code. And this means that identation is not just uh, inside Python is not just an aesthetic uh, thing to learn you know, because in Java, uh, indentation doesn't really matter as long as your code um, uh, contains properly uh, placed uh, curly braces, you're basically creating code and the compiler doesn't really matter, doesn't really care if your source code uh, is ugly or whatever. In Python, uh, you don't have curly braces to define codes of block, uh, uh, blood codes. You, you are basically using indentation to, to tell Python to the compiler, um, 
what sentences belong inside a, a block. For example, if you are creating an if, an if else sentence uh, statement, uh, you are going to need to ident um, statements uh, below that if statement in order to tell Python that this uh, this is actually a block of code inside the if statement. So indentation is paramount. Um, uh, my early uh, my early problems with my uh, Python programs were basically um, indentation related. Um, so I managed to basically uh, read in a couple of minutes uh, indentation in Python on Google, and I downloaded and read. Um, uh, the basic f of uh, a styling code in Python. So I followed that uh, style guideline to the letter and I never faced with that again in, in a manner that actually uh, mattered to me at least. So indentation is paramount for, in this case for Python. Um, uh, after learning, after 12 hours in a day, I was able to finish my uh, learning fundamentals in Python. I have to admit that I struggled uh, with collections. That was my main issue during my learning process. Yet I decided to just don't stop um, uh, just because I didn't understand how dictionaries and lists actually work. I didn't, uh, I was not going to stop learning. So uh, I managed to finish the course and do some exercises. And, and gather enough knowledge to understand the next course. And the next course was basically how to create a RESTful API um, using uh, Python and a framework called uh, Flask. So basically, um, I managed to uh, create the API and create the post and the get, and the get um, uh, methods and I was actually able to try them out using a program called Postman. Um, I was very successful. I, I felt at the end of the second day, uh, that was a Friday, uh, I was able to send um, my source code and I actually sent it um, a Git repository containing the code. Uh, and I um, documented uh, the development process and the use, uh, how to actually use the code and how to actually compile the code in a readme.md file using Markdown. So basically, I created a a Git repository with a with a GitHub compliant uh, readme.md file. So I haven't uploaded the source code to GitHub yet. I think I'm going to do it because um, after I get a response, uh, negative or positive, whatever it is, uh, from Volkswagen Puebla, uh, my, uh, at this time, uh, at the time of this recording, my source code is still on review and I am still waiting for feedback. Uh, yet, I may like to say that my experience learning Python was very fulfilling. And um, even if I don't manage to get a job and, and have the, the, the good luck of working with Python, um, I believe that Python has a, a very well, uh, deserved place in my heart right now. Because, uh, uh, for one thing, working with databases in Java, uh, has been, uh, quite difficult yet. Uh, I managed to learn how to actually properly use JDBC connectors and classes in order to work with databases. And since my main curriculum is basically senior database administrator uh, for my entire career, and that's 11 years now, I feel like uh, learning devel software development uh, focus on backend, uh, backend development complements my DBA career very well, actually. And, and it gives me superpowers uh, because the power of data can go so far if you are only working with SQL databases. And, well, that's another tool, by the way, uh, SQL databases. Uh, but the truth is that after testing the power of Python 
with web ser creating a web service and, and, and I didn't, Im and I say, well, uh, modeling and creating the, the basic structure uh, of a database is way harder than this. And considering that I managed to create, um, successfully an assignment using Python and I was able to create a race API and, uh, from zero to, to something actually, uh, uh, that was actually working in less than 24 hours. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's amazing. I, well, I managed to learn Python after 24 hours. I didn't sleep. I had to say that. Um, I knew that my, my original plan was to basically, uh, watch the courses and immediately create the, the assignment. Yet, um, after 23 hours of not, of not sleeping, um, my exhaustion got the best of me and I basically just collapsed on my bed and, and, and I just, um, slept and I wake it up around, uh, 1 p.m., uh, 1 a.m., I believe, on the, on the next day, I, I think. So, uh, I started working on the actual project. After watching two courses, I decided to work on the actual project and, uh, I managed to build, um, you know, I, I began working with, uh, with examples, with examples from the courses and I managed to get myself into something working. When I began working with the RESTful API, I find out that, uh, actually, um, linking the post and get, uh, methods to, to Python uh, functions is not actually hard. What is actually, what, uh, what I found particularly hard for me was to, uh, basically, um, for this assignment, I was storing the data, uh, inside a list in Python. So, um, the elements inside this list, um, were, were another collection called dictionaries. So basically I am getting from the website, um, from the post, um, uh, methods. I am getting a JSON, uh, type format. So I'm getting a JSON file and I importing that information inside uh, a collection of a list. And this list, this list contains a dictionary. So I find myself particularly, um, I, I find myself in, in a lot of the struggle trying to figure out how to work with a list, uh, with a dictionary inside a list. Uh, but I managed to do it. Thankfully, I got back to collections on the Python fundamental course and I began to actually understand the, uh, what the, te what the teacher was talking about because now I do have practical experience. So the second time I've been watching this course, um, many things uh, click on my brain and you know what? I, I got this, uh, aha moments where I find out that, well, uh, now this actually does have sense to me because I've been written code for around eight hours or 12 hours now. And, and now I know why, um, this guy is working like this on, on, on collection. So, uh, I work with that. Um, I managed to finish, um, the assignment after 40, uh, after two days, 48 hours. Uh, and I send the source code. And the, I basically just, uh, compress inside the set, the, the Git repo and send it by, via email. And I am, st and I am still waiting for feedback. Even if I don't get the job, uh, I can, uh, I can say that it's been, uh, quite an experience to work with Python. And I didn't know, uh, I know it existed, that Python, Python existed. Uh, yet I've been sold all my life that um, better and programming languages like C Sharp and Java are pretty much the, the top dogs. So I didn't even consider paying attention to many other programming languages that are out there. Uh, after seeing the power of Python with RESTful services, um, a, a lot of ideas are coming to my, to my mind because uh, I may actually like to continue learning Python 
in order to connect these RESTful services with databases. And um, most of my career has been a database uh, administrator. And I can say that creating web services that connect to databases, that's going to allow me to expand my database powers way beyond uh, what, are, what I already have. So, well, that's the main idea, I guess. So that was my experience learning Python. Uh, I wonder if when you were learning or for those guys that are programming already in Python, uh, what else can I do with the programming language? Because obviously Python seems to be a general programming language, just like, Py just like Java and just like C sharp, just like C++. Uh, yet the implementation of uh, after m myself learning how to create a RESTful API with Python, um, I and now I am uh, questioning myself what what else can I create with the programming language, and I I do know that learning a programming language by itself is not really that useful in today uh, market because. Uh, uh, although it's quite fun to play with a programming language, the truth is that uh, almost no one just wants to learn a programming language just for its sake. I'm basically looking for creating a practical um, software product, in this case a RESTful API. Um, in other cases, um, a program that allows me to automate my own work, as I did when I was working with uh, four iCare solutions. Um, but that's in the past, I guess. Um, now I may like to talk about uh, uh, the second job, which I apply for today. Um, and I got a, a call from the recruiter today. And it's basically a Java development, Java development job. That's the first position. Um, and there is a second position for a senior database administrator, which I feel more comfortable working with. And I guess that's more my, uh, like, um, uh, more like myself, may I say. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to be posting for that, for that one, for senior database administrator. I do have the experience. I've been dealing with large amounts of data for a long time. Um, working even when the developers don't want to work, um, maintaining information and, and such. So for necessity, I've been learning how to work with programming languages like Java in order for myself to comply with what I'm required to, to comply, um, regarding to information. So exporting information and especially in Mexico, uh, where many software developers uh, do have the tendency to store files inside database fields because it's easier for them to just uh, store the file inside a field and get it back alongside the database data. So they don't tend to you they are more inclined to just store the binary file inside a, a block field and call it a date and rather than uh, make use of a framework to actually use the file system to store files. So yeah, no, it's weird, uh, but it happens a lot here in Mexico. Uh, in every single project I've been working on, um, that happens. So, and that's uh, that's one of the main issues I've been finding in every single project I see. Uh, who knows, maybe with Python it's going to be different, maybe. Um, the, second, the second job, let me check uh, really quick. What was uh, the company name? The company name is Nearshore Technology. Um, so I've been recruited for a Java developer position there and a senior DBA position. Um, so requirements for the job are experience for with non-relational storage platforms like MongoDB, DynamoDB, Redis, Cassandra. Um, and that's something I need to learn uh, for the job, I guess. Uh, the second position is for a Java developer position, which requires experience with Maven and Jenkins. 
Uh, I did find uh, a Maven Fundamentals course on Pluralsight, which I planning to actually watch. And I am, I am still looking for a Jenkins course or maybe a, some tutorials on the internet some, some, somewhere. Uh, but the thing is that I feel like uh, after learning an entire programming language in a single day, I don't think that this is going to be too hard at all, especially because um, I've been learning Java um, for around two years now, and I've been working with Java and creating uh, use, useful stuff with Java uh, for around two years already. So I do have experience with Java, and I do have way more experience with databases. Um, the only thing is that I am uh, I am a, a, a 38 year old guy, so most of my career, my entire career has been surrounded by SQL databases. So, although learning those skills uh, do require some time and practice. I feel pretty comfortable and very confident after being able to produce uh, a, a piece of software, of working software, um, successfully with Python. So after learning Python in 24 hours, uh, mind you, I'm not an expert on that. I just learned the necessary, the minimum necessary to fulfill my job and create the assignment successfully. Uh, although doing that, I feel very comfortable and very confident about learning whatever they ask me to learn. And that's basically it, I guess. So I'm posting, uh, for, um, I'm currently working with recruiters, recruiters, uh, from LinkedIn in order to get a position on near shore technology or Volkswagen Puebla. So whatever comes, uh, I hope that I can continue working here in this beautiful city. And if, if, if by the end of this month, I don't manage to get a position, a, a new job around here, <coughs> I'm planning to go back and live with my parents back in Veracruz for, for some time to avoid my, my expenses living here. Um, to run my savings dry. Uh, if I don't have a, a current job on this city, I don't see uh, the need to keep living on this city because uh, the whole point of come to live in Puebla was because of a job I found here. So if the job doesn't exist anymore, uh, I wasn't fired really. The job just stopped it existing itself. So... <coughs> So everybody in the company got terminated. My job died alongside the company and the contract with the client. So um, if I can find a new job around here, that's fine. Uh, if by the time my rental, uh, uh, my rental time finishes, I'm not going to pay another month. I'm going to head back to Veracruz, with, live with my parents for a time until I manage to find a new job and then I should uh, uh, move away from my parents' house again, I guess. Um, I just don't see the point of the spending my savings on, on living here because uh, I don't have family here, really. I'm just here because of the, I was here because of the job. Um, and I'm not limited by the place I'm living in. So um, if I find myself another job on another state, uh, I'm more than willing to, to go to that state to live. So um, as long as there is money, I'm going to be following that money and job opportunities, obviously. So, well, that's all I have to say regarding uh, my learning experience with Python and my job seeking experience with LinkedIn. Um, I have to say that now I'm going to be focusing on learning Maven fundamentals, uh, doing some research about Jenkins, what that is and how it works, and do some research on non-relational storage platforms, um, basically no SQL databases like Mondo, MongoDB, Dynamo, Redis, Cassandra, etc. So... 
thank you very much for coming in and I'm going to keep doing this podcast episodes um, uh, as soon as I can, I guess. Maybe daily. Why not? I do have the time. So I'm going to be working daily on that. Um, and that's place, uh, pretty basically it. I do have a new... Uh, I moved my Learn to Podcast uh, YouTube channel into my personal channel account. So you can find this uh, Learn to Code podcast in YouTube. Just look for Learn to Code podcast. Um, the my channel name is Jorge Escobar altogether, and you can find me at Twitter at Jorge Escobar. And I do I, I am streaming this episode live on Mixer. You can find me on Mixer as Jorge Escobar. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can see. Um, the the links of those accounts in the description of the video. I'm going to be posting this um, uh, the audio version of the podcast and the video version of the podcast on Twitter. And I am still streaming everything on Mixer. And I'm going to be streaming my learning process on Mixer. If you want to come by and say hi, you're more than welcome. Thank you for coming in and see you later.